Hi, today we'll be going over a couple best practices associated with the Databricks feature, pools. A pool is essentially a group of warm instances that your cluster can pull from when it's spinning up or scaling up. In order to navigate to the pools UI to create an instance pool, we'll wanna click on the clusters tab on the left-hand side of the screen. Once we click on the clusters UI, you'll see that there are a few tabs here at the top. We'll wanna to go ahead and click on the pools tab. As you can see, there are already several pools that have been created in this workspace. But for the sake of this best practices video, we'll go ahead and create a new one. So first we'll name the pool. And second, we'll go ahead and set the minimum number of idle instances. This is the number of instances that will remain in the pool regardless of the instance auto termination time set below. As a best practice, it's always good to keep this to zero to make sure your pools are cost effective. Beyond that, you can additionally set a max capacity, which is the max number of instances that will remain in your pool regardless of the idle instance auto termination time. Again, to keep pools cost effective, you'll wanna keep that pretty low. Additionally, we can go ahead and set the idle instance auto termination time. This means that instances will terminate after the number of minutes specified here. Depending on the length of your jobs and the number of concurrent jobs, you may wanna adjust the setting. For the sake of example, we'll keep it at 60. Beyond that, you're able to select instance type. It's important to note that as of now, pools must be homogeneous in regards to their instance type which means that pools can only consist of a single instance type. In order to accompany this, you wanna make sure that your pools are mapped to clusters based on instance types. Additionally, you can preload a Databricks runtime to speed up cluster spin up time even more. Beyond that, it's important to discuss tags. So as you can see, there are several tags that have already been added to your pool. It's important to note that the values will be generated after pool creation because the values of these tags depend on the clusters that these pools are mapped to and the instances are pulled to within our workspace. Again, tags are propagated to the cluster depending on what cluster these instances are attached to. Beyond these tags, it's always important to tag your pools as a whole. That way, when it comes to chargeback and resource allocation, it's very easy to see where pools and where that cost is associated. So for this example, we'll go ahead and tag it by use case. It may be more important for you and your company to tag by business unit, depending on the chargeback mechanisms. And then we'll go ahead and, and tag this as the best practices video as our use case. We'll go ahead and set our LTS runtime to be preloaded onto our machines and we can go ahead and create our pool. When it comes to productionizing a pool, it's important to discuss the best practice of a starter job. In a production setting where there are several jobs and subsequent jobs, it's important to use a starter job to kick off your pool to go ahead and populate it. So I have an example of a starter job. Again, this is just a job that has a couple print statements in it, nothing major. But the purpose of this job is to go ahead and populate our pool. So any job that is pointed to the pool after this, the pool will be populated and cluster spin up time will be lower. So if we look at the job, we'll wanna make sure that the ephemeral cluster is pointed to our test pool that we just created. And we'll wanna make sure we'll match those run times as well. So I'll hit confirm. And then we can go ahead and run now. So as this job kicks off, if we jump back to our pools UI for the test pool we've created, you can see that now there are nine instances in our pool, which means that subsequent jobs after our starter job will pull from a pool with already at least nine instances in it, which will decrease cluster spin up time and keep you within your SLAs for your production jobs.